Melissa Applebaum-Schneider. I'm going to talk a little bit briefly about uh, how I did come to be in this position. I'm an RN, a professional registered nurse, for more than 30 years now. I know I look very young, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, as a registered nurse, I studied uh, under Deepak Chopra. Um, a lot of you heard of with him, okay, and Ivana Van Zandt, there's Donna Eden, and some others. I've been a critical care nurse um, in my Western world and studied on the deep track chopper about 18 years ago in my Eastern world when I worked in the city. I am an author of a book, East Means West, A Contrast of Medicine, that's published, and I'm uh, excited to say that another book that I'm in the process of writing is picked up by Hay House. Uh, division of Hay House is interested in my books. And uh, another book, which I did put out for my friends and family that became very popular, is called Take Me to Happy. And this has a lot to do with the chakra work that I will be sharing with you today. It's okay. You're welcome. So I'm going to start the presentation and how it's going to flow is that first I'm going to explain what the chakras are, and then after that we're going to do a little bit of activity, have some fun, and then uh, I will answer any questions if you have any. <coughs> so let's get going. So chakra. I apologize for my back. I'll try to move, but you have your hands out, which is perfect. So Eastern practice. I mentioned Western, now I'm going to talk about Eastern because most people are not familiar with what Eastern practice is. The major difference between Eastern and Western medicine is that in Eastern philosophies, the focus is on balance. Belief that the body and mind should be in balance with the environment surrounding it. Eastern practitioners strive to cultivate this balance, thereby eliminating illness and disease. In Western medicine, that's what we have here, Western, in the Western world, the balance of body and mind is not considered. So illness and disease are approached as needing to be fixed when broken. So with a pill or surgery, and I believe Western taught, as I said, that Western medicine, there is a very important place and should always be. But the Eastern modalities need to know now come into play because our healthcare system, as we all know, is broken and needs this shift. And that's where I'm very excited to be part of now. So from my book, East Meets West, The Contrast of Medicine, I grew up in Queens. I grew up in White Stoke by the White Stoke Bridge. And I used to take the subway, the train station. And it, it came to where I realized that this was a simple way for me to present and teach, and I speak about this in my book, uh, for the subway system. And think of the chakras in terms of the subway system. So picture the map that reveals the various stops that it will make along its destination. Your body has a conductor, which is your brain, engine, which is your heart, and currents of electricity, which is your nervous system, gears is organs, and so on. It is easy to see that if any of these break down, there is a slow up or discord or halting of the disease entirely. And most of us reside in discord. Now picture the map of the system, each stop with a circle. Again, if you've never been on a subway, it goes across with, with uh, circles that show your destination. Stop in the circle to pinpoint where the intended stop is. Each circle or chakra is needed, otherwise the system runs without a destination and therefore for no apparent reason. Now let us use the railroad system. We're in Long Island and we're supposed to be no railroad. So uh, to understand the flow of the chakras. So a train or a subway, Railroad. A local train has many stops, which enables more people to board. People continually boarding causes the train to become congested. 
exposure to possible disease, breathing into a closed environment with stale air, and other offenses can cause our body to react. Notice what your senses are experiencing now. Even though the thought of someone being so close to you with body odor would surely have you wanting to leave the train at the next stop. An express train has two stops, which enable you to go from point A to point B with ease. People are sitting with personal space well protected. Ventilation allows the breathing in of your own breaths, and you may close your eyes and picture a pleasant day when you arrive. Notice what your senses are experiencing now. You might want to stay on this train longer. Again, you can think of your body in relation to this. So now, uh, chakras. Chakras correspond to vital points in the physical body, such as uh, arteries and veins and nerves and organs, all in this, in this Eastern philosophy, which is 5,000 years old, actually has this philosophy that by using the chakras, using these points, which some people would, would say is imaginary because you can't touch a chakra, but using these points of, of your body actually physically helps your arteries, your nervous system, and your organs. And there's now research uh, to show it. So what are chakras? Chakras, you hear of, and it's a Sanskrit word, 5,000 years old, and it says, but they're really wheels. If you picture a wheel that goes in motion, it goes clockwise. That's how your chakras in your body, and I'll discuss the main one, chakras in your body are to go. So I just want you to have that visualization in your mind. Now, there is, like we have, millions of cells in our bodies, millions that go through our lifetime. We also have billions of chakras in our body. But there's a consensus that there is seven main ones, and those are the ones that I'm going to discuss, and then we're all going to tap into it. <coughs> so the seven main ones, I'm going to start from the bottom up. The bottom one is the root chakra. It's located at the base of the spine, and it spins at the slowest rate. Its color is red, and at one point we're going to talk about the colors. And its area of focus is survival and sustenance, relating to such things as money, shelter, and basic material needs. It is my belief there are certain diseases to buy the proper diet, that's very important nutrition, and medications which can be eased by concentrating on your chakra in this area, such as irritable bowel disease, constipation, and intestinal disorders. So that's really the integrating of both, where you have an understanding of the chakra and then use the rested uh, medications and interventions as needed. So we're moving up now. Sacral chakra is located midway between your navel and the base of your spine. And when I say base of the spine, it's really if you think of the spine in your back. So I'm, I'm pointing here, but it truly is when you think of the spine going inward towards your back. So the sacral chakra is located midway between your navel and the base of your spine. It spins slightly faster than the red root chakra. Its color is orange. Its area of focus is physical desires, exercise, habits, sleep patterns, and addictions. This area can help ease sleeplessness, and a lot of people do have problems with sleep. So one thing I will say is that if, if anything you take away, it is that you can use, and we're going to talk briefly, I will talk briefly about aromatherapy, is that <coughs> lavender is a great essential oil, and I'll explain that as well soon, uh, for sleeplessness. Combined with essential oil, lavender can aid in sleep. Do not be concerned whether you actually fall asleep or not as the relaxation of your body will be deeper and through practice will become more relaxed. Solar plexus, moving up, is located behind the navel. It spins at a faster rate than the root and sacral chakras, and its color is yellow. The area of focus is of power and control. And it's not power like you want to beat somebody up. It's power holding your power within you. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later slides. 
Uh, Any time a sense of control is required, this area is useful, such as mind-related disease, depression, and anxiety. Pilates and yoga are examples that use the solar plexus chakra in their practice. So um, I think the heart chakra is on the slide because I truly believe that this is what is needed in our society. Uh, heart chakra is located at the center of your chest. It spins at a medium fast speed. Its color is green and or pink. Its area of focus is love, people attachment, forgiveness or lack thereof, uh, and clear essence, which is a clear feeling. When people are more clear in how they're feeling. Uh, this chakra is the beginning of the upper level chakras, which corresponds to spiritual issues. And it's really you hear um, when there's discussion of the heart chakra and the upper chakras is more of the spirituality and where uh, loving kindness and compassion is more in, in that realm. So this chakra can aid all the chakras in its quest for peace and balance with <coughs> Changing one's perspective is a powerful, powerful tool in the balance of life. When one comes from a place of light, one can no longer be in the dark. So what does anger and darkness serve in kind with? Look into your heart chakra and you will see it cannot serve you. It all starts and ends with you. Not from an ego perspective, but actually from a collective perspective. But when each of us comes from light and love, that is all there is. And the reason why I put this and talk about the chakras in this realm before I, I say anything about the program that I run, I'm the director, um, over at Cold Spring Hills in Woodbury, Long Island. And I actually pioneered a program. I contacted New York State, my governing body. We actually won a, uh, several awards for it, where we